Hello and welcome. You're watching FII. I am Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. Now, what a day it has been for India at the games, inspiring so many people from hockey to weightlifting to wrestling to boxing to golf now and so many others. The list of our hopefuls keep increasing and our medal tally with that. And along with these medals are born several dreams. Young kids in the hinterlands of the country looking at these matches, looking at the stories of the people behind it are now getting inspired. But we thought, while these dreams are being made, let's try and give you a hint of how much is it that these Olympic athletes actually make? In terms of money, how much is it that they earn? Not just the medal money, but what is the career like for them post their big Olympic win as well? And is this a sustainable career option? So without any further ado, let's get started with our explainer. Now, the first thing that you need to know about this is that the IOC, that's the Indian Olympic Commission, the guardian for the Olympic Games, does not hand out the prize money to these uh, Olympic uh, players. Uh, they, pro they provide medals and certificates to the, uh, to the athletes who achieve the top eight uh, in the ranking. And most Olympic winners are rewarded by their home Olympic committees. How much is that really and what other are the sources of income for these athletes? Other sources of income, they include things like stipends, training grants from their National Sports Association, prize money from national, international tournaments and endorsements and sponsorships and deals, which is really the biggest chunk of money that they achieve. But what we've done for you today is we have taken how much is it that several countries pay their medalist. We'll start with India to give you a glimpse of that. In India, if you win a gold medal, you get 75 lakh. For silver, it is 40 lakh. For bronze, it is 25. And guess which country in the world is at the moment paying the highest to their medal winners? It is not USA. It is not China. It is actually Singapore. Singapore pays its gold medalists. 7 lakh and 44,000 US dollars, that's approximately 5.52 crore rupees. To their silver, it's about 2.76 crores. To their bronze medalist, they pay about 2.12 crores. Next is actually Hong Kong. They pay about 4.78 crore to their gold, 2.39 to silver and 1.19 crore to their bronze. Third on that list is Kazakhstan. For their gold, they pay about 1.85 crore. For silver, 1.11. For bronze, 55.67. Then comes Malaysia. For their gold, it's about uh, 72, like about 2 lakh 41,000 US dollars, roughly about 1.78 uh, crore over there. For their silver, it's about 53.58 lakh. And for their bronze, it is about 17.89 lakh. Italy comes next, interestingly. For their gold, 1.57 crore. For silver, 7.69 lakh. For their bronze, 52.55. Then comes Philippines, interestingly. For gold, 1.48 lakh uh, crore. Beg your pardon. Silver, 74.23 lakh. And bronze, 29.69. Then comes France, much lower on that list. For, after that is Japan, much lower on that list. And then comes Brazil. After Brazil, actually on this comes USA. Guess how much they are paying to their medalists. For gold in USA, you earn about 37,500 US dollars. For silver, 22,500 US dollars. And for bronze, 15,000. Then comes Canada and then Australia. So what we've done really for you is picked out the top few countries. And what does that statistic actually tell you? That the, number, the countries which are giving the highest number of cash rewards don't necessarily contribute to more number of medals. So what exactly is the trick to push a nation towards becoming a more sports friendly nation? Well, remember in India, we talked about those cash rewards over there, but those are not the only things that athletes win. States announce their own rewards. For example, Haryana, UP, Urisa, Chandigarh, 6 crores in awards. Karnataka, uh, Gujarat, 5 crores. Delhi, Rajasthan, Sikkim, Tamil Nadu, about 3 crores. And Punjab, 2.25. They made an exception for uh, their player now winning a silver over there. About 4 crores coming in from the kitty of that state. Himachal Pradesh, Jharkhand, Telangana, 2 crores. Uttarakhand, 1.5. Manipur, 1.5. Maharashtra, Kerala, Goa, 1 crore, Meghale, 75 lakh, Jammu and Kashmir, 50 lakh, and West Bengal, 25 lakh as well. 
So interesting, right? How much money these athletes and these medalists in Olympics actually win. But then let's go to the larger question now and let's get to our panel at this point and trying to see does this really contribute? What does this really mean when it comes to making an Olympic career, if one can call it that? Joining us on the program, very fascinating guest. We've got Shagun Chaudhary with us. She's the first ever woman to actually represent uh, India in the Olympics in the shotgun category, the only woman so far. She's an Asian game medalist and national games uh, champion as well in several ones. So her perspective is going to be very interesting. We have with us Reet Brahim. She's the former athlete, Arjun Awardee and joint convener for Clean Sports India. We have with us Peter Wilson. England uh, double uh, trap shooter, Olympic gold medalist as well. So we'll sort of get a comparison of India vis-a-vis -vis the world, how exactly are the stakes, what works, what does not work. And also with us is uh, Meer uh, Ranjanegi, former hockey coach, will be joining us shortly. And of course, Nikhil Nas to give us a perspective on all of that. Thank you all so much for your time. Shagun, let me begin with you. I just put out some statistics over there. What is your first thought that comes to mind? Like I said clearly, the amount of money that is actually given out by associations or countries, uh, different for different uh, countries really, doesn't really contribute to more medals. So what does? My first thought is, wow, if only they'd done this like three years back in the making of an athlete. Mm. And we would have probably picked up more medals. Because uh, the trend that I see in India is that there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, expectation from the athlete that goes to the Olympics the journey, nobody is going along with the athlete. The amount of financial investment that the athletes have to make in order to take up the sport and to take it to that level, they're doing it by themselves. Sports, why is uh, India not a sports rich country? India is not a sports rich country because the support system that needs to be there at, at the base, at the starting of a child picking up a sport is not there. Champions are literally bought and not built. It should be the other way around. Hmm. It should hmm. imagine if or if the governments or if the corporates or uh, whoever it might be, everybody wants to join the bandwagon now once hmm. they've won a medal. Hmm. But what does it take to win that medal? If they would have been part of that process and hmm. said that, look, I have supported so and so athlete, she or he made it to the Olympics, she picked up a medal because I was there for her, that would make much more of an impact, a huge incentive for parents to put their wards in sports, knowing that they'll be looked after. Right. If you see hmm. uh, the career graph of, uh, of an athlete, it's hmm. a very short lived life. Hmm. And you either make it or break it within that span. You have to facilitate that process while the athlete is in the process. If you hmm. don't come back with a medal, it's a zero. So if you're talking about uh, uh, Olympic athletes making money, no, it's only Olympic medalists. And that is why we have so such few of them. That is right. what we need to look at. Very fascinating. Nikhil, uh, come in at this point on how a lot of rewards actually come their way post their victory. But what about the making of an athlete? And look at the stories around us today. Look at all these women in the hockey team, men over there, even the story of all the boxers and wrestlers at this point. And one, you know, tying thread over there is all of them talk about how their parents one of the parents had a dream and they pushed and pushed and put in all their life saving and energy to make that one sporting star. And that seems to be the key behind them, not, uh, you know, sort of associations, not governments. That's right, Sonal. I mean, uh, you know, what's really wrong with the Indian sport? I think I think the graphic really sums up because, you know, this is the approach that we have. It's a it's a top down approach as in, listen, these many crores you're going to get if you win a medal. And and these many crores you'll get if you're one of those elite athletes in the country. And so, you know, that's where the top scheme kicks in, the governments kick in. Once you are a top level elite athlete, only all of these benefits start coming to you. And that's the top up approach, which is wrong. Why is India different from the rest of the world? Because it's a bottom down approach. What that is, is your first playing sport. You're playing sport because you love sport. You play sport in your school. You play sport in your college. You compete. You you actually join sport not for a for a livelihood because you like to compete. And that's what first world countries do. What is what is it that the U.S. pays its athlete? As you as you mentioned, 37 lakh is what they give a gold medalist here in India. If you were to put together a, a silver medalist, he he go past 10 crores. That 
that's probably what 20 times of what a US uh, athlete would get mm. once he gets the medal. Mm. But the thing is, it's a bottom down approach. Everyone plays sport there. The school structure is strong. The college structure is strong. Mm. How can you become an Olympic nation or a sporting nation unless you have that in place? So that is something that you need to look at. You have to become a sporting nation first, then look at the rewards. I don't think India have it worse. Uh, if you were to look at all sportsmen around the world, look at the US, look at the UK, and you know we get a perspective from outside India as well. Most Olympic athletes are professionals in their own life. One could be a cop, one could be driving a taxi. They all do that. But but they also compete. So you're not, your goal is not always to earn a livelihood out of sport. Your goal is to compete, to fight. The only difference is when you're competing or when you're uh, you know, pursuing a different career. I was just seeing a, a you know, wrestler participating from the US. He's a microbiologist. He's studying to be a microbiologist, yet mm. competing for a gold medal. The mm. difference is that they have a structure at your college level, at your school level, which mm. is conducive to producing champions. You'll get good coaching. You'll get good advice. Your college coaches are of top level, not like in India. So what, what happens in India when you're nearing an Olympic, the government will say, listen, here, take 50 crores from, of our budget and spend it on the 50 best athletes that you have that's not how you're going to produce number of medals what you got to do is put that money as as you know uh, shagun was mentioning a short while ago in the grassroots programs mm. and so you say we have we have a country of 1.3 billion people and yet we produce so few medals that's mm. because out of the 1.3 billion people how many play i mean look at boxers for example there'd be less boxers in india per square kilometer than probably in the uk uk would have 10 times that even though the population could be 10 times less than what india is that needs to change and that can only change forget the medals i mean it's great that you know you you get all these reward after winning the medal mm. but the money really needs to be pumped down their bottom up approach that is what is going to change the things fascinating let me get a perspective from peter at this point now peter for those of you who don't know is actually a world record holder for the event uh, for the double trap shooter he scored 198 out of 200 at the world cup event in arizona in 2012 He's a member of the British team of the 2012 Summer Olympics as well and the youngest competitor in the men's double trap event when he won that gold medal over there. Peter, when you're listening to these voices from India, uh, what is it like to be a sportsman in UK where you grew up? What was the infrastructure like? What support did you get from, say, the committees, from the government, etc.? Uh, wow. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's very, very different. We don't earn any money from Olympic medals. So after I won gold in 2012, uh, I didn't receive a, a penny from my, my government or governing body. Hmm. Uh, that's, not a, that's not to say it's wrong or right. It's just these are the facts to, to lay bare. Uh, what I will say is that we do have uh, what appears to be, uh, 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 literally just talking to you guys now, a better system to support younger athletes. So I was supported within six months of taking up double trap uh, at the age of 19 uh, and was taken to the European Championships where I won, where I won gold uh, and, uh, and was supported pretty much the whole way through to 2012, 2013 before I called time on my career. Uh, there is, of course, uh, you know, bumps in the road like every athlete has to face and my parents had to stump up um, some money at that point. Uh, you know, it's not an easy road. I don't think anyone in the UK ever takes up Olympic sport to become rich. That's, that's a fact. Uh, you do it because you love it. I'm sure that's the case around the world. It's not just uh, in the UK. Hmm. Um, it's, it, it is an interesting and controversial subject about rewards for Olympic medals. It's something that is constantly brought up here in Great Britain. Hmm. Uh, but at the moment, we don't have any, uh, any to speak of. All right, fascinating. And when you said, Peter, that you had, so these are sponsors who stepped on board? No, we have a system called uh, UK Sport, which is essentially a government quango. So the British government provides uh, an amount of money that is matched by a thing called National Lottery. That is, uh, it's, a, it's a gamble, a gambling uh, um, uh, on numbers, essentially, mm. program. People pay into that. Uh, and uh, and is matched by government support. So essentially, you have this uh, philanthropic arm, uh, government arm, which which uh, provides an amount of money to UK sport. And out of UK sports money, it, it's it divvies up to sports like shooting, uh, for example. And uh, and so we receive an amount of money every four years for every Olympic cycle. Uh, and they try to pick Olympic medalists. Uh, they try to pick aspiring world medalists. They try to pick aspiring European 
uh, junior medalists uh, and uh, the money trickles down. Invariably, people would argue even now that the money doesn't go far enough, doesn't go far enough to the grassroots. We do the best we can with what we've got. Everyone would always want more money. I'm sure you'll find the same in India, all around the world. Uh, but uh, but it, it, it is, I think, a very much more focused, uh, bottom-up approach. Uh, and I do, I must admit, uh, your earlier um, contributor was saying it is extraordinary, isn't it, that in a country of India's size, you know, w- would uh, would pale in comparison to little old Britain in terms of its medal numbers at Olympic Games. I, I find that truly extraordinary. That that it, that either means we are doing something exceptional. Or it means that you're doing something wrong. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know the intricacies enough. But, you know, what I can tell you is what we do. And we do tend to focus more heavily on the bottom up approach rather than the, you know, top down. I think the answer is pretty clear there over there, Peter. But let me go uh, to Reet Ibrahim as well. Reet, very fascinating, no? Like India this time around had the largest ever contingent that is sent out to Olympics as well. But so many players who come in. Why is it that... I've been curious about it. That how is it that we find most of them from, say, hinterlands? Why is it that we find most of them who've taken up this career, perhaps, or should we really call it one, really, or taken up a sport because their parents have been talking about it, or it's a tradition in the village where they really grew up? Uh, yeah, to add to what the experts have said, uh, you know, I, I want to say that, uh, you know, my kids and my peers who had done sports earlier, they don't want to do uh, take up sports in the country. Because um, I've been watching for uh, almost 10, 15 years now. Uh, nothing has changed in the country. The facilities have improved, but uh, the approach the federations and the associations down the line give the young athletes is it has not improved. Uh, I'm, I mean to say when there is a national event for the juniors or for the seniors, it's organized so badly. So if, if a child who's really talented uh, goes there for an event, the experience is bad. So he loses interest. So I, I'm saying that there is so much of talent in the country. And if that is not tapped at the young age and you just just before the Olympics, you uh, hang a carriage in front of the athlete and say, OK, if you win the Olympics, we'll give you so much money. That is not done. The support at the grassroots level and the facilities has to end. In our schools and colleges, it is pathetic. I know when I go overseas, in every school, I see a, a synthetic track and a basketball court and a football court. Hmm. Now, here in, in our country, there's nothing. Even, even every district doesn't have a, a field or a track where uh, the athletes can train. Hmm. It's only uh, uh, somebody who can afford it will, will do some kind of sports. Right. And kids like mine who uh, don't have all the talent in them don't want to do sports because it, it's not exciting for them. The facilities are still bad. Hmm. The organizing skills of the uh, associations and federations is, uh, has not improved. So uh, what I mean to I say is... It's improved over the years, but not to the level that we would like it to go, really. Let's take a uh, break on that point. When we come back, we'll uh, go back to the panel again and try and understand from them. So what is the best way to actually invest in sport and make India this dream sporting nation that we all keep talking about? That's coming up on the other side. Welcome back. We have a time to just quickly go around the panel for some closing comments as well. Nikhil, I'll begin with you. Uh, what can be done, uh, Sonal, quickly? I mean, if I had a message uh, to make India a sporting nation, firstly to the parents, don't always look at your kid, you know, when you're encouraging him to play sport, that he needs to have that as a career. He could always have a career, but you play sport for various other reasons. So encourage that. If he goes on to become a top level sportsman, that's a different thing. The other thing, you know, you got to realize and, and, you know, you, you're listening to Peter as well. In the US, there is no sort of money that's coming in from the government. All of US sport is supported by people themselves. It's the private players that come into play. So here's a message for everyone that includes fans like you and I. We need to support Olympic sport like mm. it happens everywhere else. There are people who fund them. 
rest of the money comes from like university sport, college sports, which is again funded by people from private players like corporates. We have a few corporates in India that fund, but not majorly. I mean, I'm giving you the example of a USA because that's one of the most successful nations in Olympic mm. sport. So that you really need to come in. In India, we have a scenario where forget about sponsoring an athlete. A company actually piggybacks on an athlete after she wins a, a silver medal at the game, like a pizza brand and says, hey, listen, you know, get free pizza. You never paid a penny for a training all this while. But as soon as she was in the limelight, hmm. you piggybacked on her and got all the publicity that you like. Hmm. You had another cement brand do that. So that needs to stop. All these brands need to come much before an athlete is made. So I'm saying all of us are responsible. Forget about the government. I think the Indian government or the Indian setup that way has been paying for athletes everywhere else in the world. It has to be self-sustainable. Make the sport self-sustainable. Have TV rights being sold. Make it friendly. Have more organ. I mean, that's where your state associations come into play. Mm. Have that regularly. We keep cribbing about how cricket is doing well, but cricket is self-sustainable. It doesn't need Indian government's help. It doesn't need anybody else's help. So sport needs to become self-sustainable, and then you have a future in sport. Right. Uh, Shagun, do you want to come in on this? What is it that cricket has done that other sports perhaps didn't do? Cricket is, I think... What cricket has done is, is basically, for India, cricket is like they call it a religion, right? Mm. It's already had that fan following. It's already got all these followers. People, uh, you know, uh, I mean, but didn't that when also a begin with that big World Cup and the entire team of Kapil Dev, etc., coming in? Wasn't that also part of the euphoria? Wasn't that also contributing to how people picked up the sport? Absolutely, but that that's what that's what the media houses need to do. They need to actually invest in other sports sports men, make them popular, mm -hmm. have uh, uh, have people following them as well in order to uh, gain traction. Mm -hmm. And only once they gain traction will they uh, as far, we need visibility for sports in general mm -hmm. needs to go up. After the Olympics is over, nobody's going to hear of the hockey team playing any of the World Cups. You're not going to hear of the wrestlers going to any championships. You're not going to hear of anything till the Asian Games come up or till the mm. Commonwealth Games. So why do we have these periods where, where sports is not really talked about? I see. And mm. only mm. cricket is talked about. So mm. who's responsible for that? Like Nikhil said, right. it's all of us. We need to build, uh, uh, you know, we need to build interest in right. the sports people, their I'm, lives, their journey, support right. that. Well, we're and hoping to do that with today's program, at least, and talking about it. But I ha oh, I've run out of time, but quickly, last comments to both Peter and Reith. Peter, why don't you go first? Um, it's, it's such a difficult question. I could probably spend hours on this subject, but uh, in a very short, sharp way, whilst I was a competitor, I would always look at the people that were better than me uh, and start by essentially copying them and then improving on what they've already done. In this instance, China was nowhere 50 years ago, and now they're leading the medal table. I would look at what China are doing, what America are doing, what the top three nations are doing. Mm. Uh, you don't necessarily need to directly copy, but you know, you know, India should be a dominant force, top three Olympic medal force, uh, and it's not. And so I would look at the guys and girls out there that are just that bit better. I would, I would look to copy. I would look to replicate what they're doing and then try and improve right. on that. Right. Reith, quickly, 30 seconds. Yeah, like I said earlier, uh, the facilities at the grass level has to improve and the whole uh, outlook uh, of the Indian, uh, um, you know, the people, the corporates, the uh, sports authority of India has changed, but it has to uh, look at it in a different way where they can, you know, take up sports as not uh, just as an extracurricular activity in schools and colleges, but they have to look at professionally mm -hmm. where the child from the age of 12 and 13 will look at sports as, as a professional uh, manner and, you know, set their goals uh, right. All right, we leave it there for the moment. Thank you all so much for your time and your thoughts on this. We really hope governments, companies, individuals, they're all listening in very closely on this one. We leave it there for now. Thanks so much for watching.